Hey everyone, thank you so much for showing up. Penny says, let's solve this shit. Oh, I'm not supposed to see. Let's solve this poop. Not dog poop, just poopy case. Yeah, that kind of thing, right? We're gonna solve it. We're gonna figure it out. Yeah, okay. Everyone, I would like for you to meet Detective Lockhart from Indiana. He is, um, to, good? No? Great. Okay. <laughs> he has been working on this case for 10 years and is determined to solve it. So we are trying to put this out there and get as much attention for it as possible, which is why we need you to share this one, share the last video, share it on every platform that you know about to try and get as many people to view it as possible so we can get his picture seen by as many people as possible because somebody knows this dude. Somebody knows him. Somebody, somewhere. I mean, he's he's literally not invisible. So <laughs> you guys tell me what kind of questions that you have because we have the expert here that can answer them. Um, let me scroll up and see. Somebody had questions from the other stream. Is Mistress here? Mistress, what was your question? Okay, Iris, how long were they married? <laughs> uh, they were not, let's, what, let's see, they were married in, what, 90? Six months? Yeah, 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 about six months. So what he said was, he said his parents were deceased and he had no siblings. But he also said that his mother was Italian and Italians are about as close to Hispanic as you can get. And I mean, everybody's a cousin, like you're related to the whole town. So that, that kind of threw me a bit. <laughs> you crack me up. Everybody's a cousin. <laughs> Food fairy says, Hey, yeah. <laughs> so cool that you're here. I know it is absolutely amazing. Well, I want to, I want to solve this. You guys are my, you guys are my link. Let's do hey, that. We got to do what we got to do. Tim, this man is guilty of something. Being a fill in the blank. Absolutely. No adultery or a best friend that knows something. He did have a African-American friend, but she didn't know the name, didn't know the number. Uh, that he would talk to, but she had uh, she had no ideas on how I would get a hold of this guy, so that was a dead end. And didn't she say he was elderly too? I mean, yeah. it wasn't even like a someone his age, right? Mm, good question. So there was no DNA from him at all anywhere, right? She had. Uh, she had originally told me that she had a bunch of his clothes that she had never washed. Um, and she told me that for about a year that she was going to bring it in and that never happened. Um, so that was the search warrant. And then uh, once we executed the search warrant, you know, we found a toothbrush uh, during the search warrant, the, the letters, the envelopes. Uh, then she told us that she had destroyed or burnt his clothing and stuff. So but you guys keep in mind, Detective Lockhart didn't get this case until 20 years after he left, because when they first got it, there's nothing going on. An adult can go missing. If you decide, hey, I'm done, I wanna walk away from my life, you can do that. And the cops may track you down, but they're just gonna prove that you're still alive and somebody didn't bury you in the backyard. And then, they're going to let you be, and they don't even have to tell your family where you're at. They can just say, hey, they're okay, and that's it, and walk away. So it, it's actually happened a couple times if you read up on missing persons cases. it's So when Detective Lockhart got it, it was kind of like, okay, well, nobody ever officially closed this case. So he's either got to prove he's alive or start digging up the backyard. So... We're going to try and prove he's alive. <laughs> so
So that's an interesting one. Have you ever looked into like the business of buying identities up there? So, no, um, and we discussed this last night. Um, so we know that he was assigned the social security number in 1987. Um, so the, the social security number was actually not Skippy's. It was one that he filed for in 1987. Um, I think there was a smidge of confusion on that angle of it. Um, yeah. Um, Skippy's parents had never filed for the social security number. So he used that information to obtain a complete new social security number. But he would have to buy Skippy's information. I'm sure that was probably like a hot market of children who had never had a social assigned to them, maybe? Possibly, but where do you even start? Uh, we don't know where he came from. We don't have a name to begin with. Um, so we talk about a needle in a stack. <laughs> you know, that's the problem. So I can tell you the name Coletti is a very Italian name. And there are quite a few of them around the Pennsylvania, Ohio, even into Indiana and New York, lots in New York. And one of the things that I am still working on that um, I may try and go into in another stream is from a genealogical aspect, going back in census records and locating all the Colettis and figuring out who they were, who they married, because then their name would change, who their kids were, and where are those kids now? And that is a massive undertaking to try and do that. But you have to do that to rule each one out. Because what if one of the kids from one of the Colettis is really him? Oh, everybody say hi to Mama. Mama's here. And somebody does know something. There's somebody somewhere that knows something. And, and that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing. Like we talked about last night, there's, there's, he had a life before. He's had to have had a life after. So where is he? Right. Somebody knows something. It, I find it interesting that he worked these, I don't want to call them, I don't want to demean anybody by the job they do, but kind of menial jobs where you, you're you not noticed. So I find that interesting about him as well, that he, he stayed kind of low-key in his life. So did he continue to do that as a point of staying out of... Uh, the limelight, if you will, came to a small town in Indiana. Well, when you compare that to what he has done, he would have to be an incredibly intelligent person to pull this off and not make any mistakes. And from what we can tell, he did not make any mistakes. So that that shows a level of intelligence and that planning and everything else would say that he has some kind of experience in something job wise. Right. Did he steal from his wife? Um, Not that she's reported. He left her a hundred dollar bill when he left. I mean, it makes up for anything, right? <laughs> well, back then, that probably you know paid the mortgage for the month. Driver, good question on the driver's license. Um, so, on his background for St. Vincent's Hospital, uh, there is a. I'm going to go to the Wayback Machine, a Xerox copy of his uh, driver's license. You cannot, I didn't know that. Yeah, I can provide that to you. Um, you cannot read it because it is a Xerox copy. Um, and so I tried to track that down. The other problem is, is that the Indiana Bureau of Motor Vehicles has changed computer systems times and expunged records. So time has not been my friend. So funny, she, when Detective Lockhart went to Purdue University, they actually recorded a very long video. It's like an hour and a half long. And you weren't able to hear the the original video because somebody was eating a bag of chips right next to the, right next to the phone. And I spent a very long time cleaning up the video and I got just the audio. And when I listened to it, she actually um, gave a little monologue about how once she realized he was gone and not coming back, she kind of went on a tirade. She's like, I broke it. I 
tore it. I ripped it. I, you know, shredded it and destroyed everything possible. It's funny. She's not one to show a whole lot of emotion, but that night she, uh, she yeah. emotions at Purdue. She is. Um, so the wife is very meek and mild and non-confrontational, like to the max. And this is really overwhelming for her having to, you know, deal with the stress of it. And I think she, she would rather just not deal with it and just, and so it's a really difficult thing for her. Yeah. Once you have a birth certificate and that that's the thing. And back then, um, I think, um, food fairy just said, we got cheap, loose records here in Chicago. I mean, even to this day, they're a hot mess. Um, no, I wasn't. Um, so the original investigator for GMAC was unable to provide me with that documentation because, again, time was not on our side. And they had expunged their records after seven to 10 years. Yeah. Pretty much everybody does after 10 years. They just get rid of it. Yeah, Nigel, nothing. Uh, I none mean, of, yeah, sorry. No, you. Uh, none, of, none of the documents that we processed at the state police lab uh, yielded any fingerprints or DNA. Uh, trust me, <laughs> I'm not a religious person, but I was sending up every type of religious prayer that I could. Um, and we did not receive anything out of that. So uh, the chip company has uh, shut their doors and had some time ago. Again, dead end on it. Um, you know, time. <laughs> right? You know? So an interesting thing about the Geo Metro that I actually just found out is he said he bought it new, drove it off the showroom floor. And when he turned it in, so he bought this within three or four months before disappearing. When it was found, it was a year. So a year and a half at the most is how long he had the Metro. It had 40,000 miles on it. And he had started in Indiana and it was found in Colorado. So where did he go? Like cross country and back? All right. We know he went to the Dakotas. Yeah. yeah. And Hoven, South Dakota is literally like BFE right. with an exclamation point. There's not even highways close by. Right. It's it's nuts. Like the population is nothing plus nothing and 20 people. It it's crazy. So the problem runs into that we know that his name is not a real, it's a real name. It's a stolen identity though. So I have, uh, after the true crime garage episode, I was contacted by some people that work for, uh, basically customs and immigration that can track, uh, you know, people leaving and entering the United States and the name has never left the United States or entered. So that's about as close as I can get on that. Again, we don't know who he is. So it, so much depends on figuring out another, either A, who he was afterward or before. Which organized crime has not been ruled out. The um, I, I don't think. You haven't ruled out Little Joe, have you? The... The captain of investigations in Cleveland did not like it, and he was pretty confrontational with me about that theory. Mm -hmm. uh, he is sold that, no, it is not Little Joe. 
and little Joey's dead. But he doesn't have a body. Correct. But and if you don't have a body, that's not proof in my book. Right. Or a picture of a body, at least. Right. I mean, let me see that he's really, I don't even trust pictures anymore. You can Photoshop someone dead. Yeah. Like, let me see a real body. I want to see a real body. And then, <laughs> and then they're dead. Right. And, and the one that, the one that you spoke about in, uh, from a couple of years ago, that's in Alaska mm -hmm. with that last name of that individual, I was like, oh, this is a definite mob connection. This is him. This is great. Yes. This is beautiful. And then dead end. He, he has a very, um, I, I didn't publish his name because, you know, right. he's still, he's still living. He's a person and, you know, I don't want to put his information out there, but he has a very um, connected name, which I also thought, you know, Coletti might be a, a connected name. So I am. So another thing that we actually were just talking about last night is the accent. So um, his wife said that he said certain words weird and she specifically said the word water and order. So I was Googling like crazy trying to figure out what does this mean? And the only accent in the country that says that it's a O with a weird little thing on top of it that says that sound weird is Philadelphia English. And so that is the same accent that, you know, basically Pennsylvania most of Pennsylvania has that accent that the people who live in like the Cleveland area have mm -hmm. because the, the organized crime from Philly, you know, and Pittsburgh and Cleveland are all kind of, you know, interconnected in certain ways. So even if he is not little Joe, there's nothing to say that he's not connected to that organization or anything else because I had never known anything about Youngstown other than Youngstown's bad, <laughs> you know, right. don't ever go to Youngstown. And there's lots of documentaries about it, but I started watching a few and wow, like the city was just run by them in the eighties. So, and then they went to war with each other and there is a laundry list of people who were murdered in that time. And then everybody started cracking down. So they scattered. So it's entirely possible that he got caught up in all of that and ran. Or it could be something simple like, you know, he killed his wife and buried her in the backyard and is running from that. I, I think he's running from something. I, I mean, I, why else would you go through all this effort? Like, no one wants to look over their shoulder for years and years. That just doesn't make sense. No, no, absolutely not. The wife specifically said he never did drugs. He never drank. He never did anything like that, that it wasn't that type of personality. But that doesn't mean he wasn't involved in an organization. You know, most of the people in the higher ups of the organization don't have hands on. And I don't know, is human trafficking a big thing in the North or is that mainly just the South? Well, I mean, right now it's everywhere, um, but there's such a, uh, a focus on it. You know, you know, we we notice it now more than we ever did. And it's always been around, I suppose, but I don't think the focus, it wasn't such a big thing back then as it is now. So Iris, I when I first read this case, that was kind of my initial thought is, you know, people leave all the time. But the thing that got me is he was renting to own his house. And he had just purchased it like a year before. And that's a big commitment. Renting to own is a contract just like you're buying a house. You just don't have enough credit to actually buy it. And also, two weeks before he disappeared, he put her son on his insurance so why would you go through all that effort to do that if you're going to disappear and your insurance is going to get canceled in a week anyways when you don't show up for work? So I kind of feel like something happened to make him disappear. Let's not forget about the phone call on Thanksgiving that he walked down the street. So the the motel that he went to still stands. Uh, mm -hmm. the 
no longer there, like any payphone. But he walked, according to the wife, he walked down to use the payphone, comes back, leaves, and is gone forever. So had he scheduled to receive a phone call or was he going to make a phone call that that got him to leave. You know, what what was going on there? The in that Bell South obviously doesn't have any records twenty years later. Nobody has records. Because we tried that aspect too or that angle as well. If I was running from something, I would still have a contact to check in to see, you know, if anybody was close to figuring out where I was at. And I would probably contact them using a payphone back in the day you know, before burner phones, and it would be one that wasn't right next to my house or something like that. So it makes, makes sense. Yeah. Um, no. Um, and I, I don't even know what kind of therapy it was. She, she mentioned therapy, but it, it not something you needed to be qualified for. He did when I ran a check on him, it did show up that he had a license as a truck driver because truck drivers were required to be licensed. And that was something that started in, um, I believe it was 87, which was the year he got his social security number is that truck drivers or anyone with a professional license was required to provide a social security number in order to get or maintain that license. So that was a new law that went into effect at that point in time. So that could also be what prompted him to, to get the social. I agree with that statement. I mean, it's pretty solid. Um, there was documentation that this gentleman was in Alaska at the time, as in being arrested or incarcerated. Mm. Uh, I at, thought it was work records. So that's even that's even stronger. Uh, which, if you want to see those, I could give those to you as well. Um, but. Uh, yeah, he, he was in Alaska, which I was hoping for a Alaska vacation and yeah. no one, That'd him, be awesome. but no, that was shot down. Road trip. So, I mean, anything's worth a try, but again, I don't even have through Indiana. We don't have any information because of the change of the systems they they've yeah. changed them so many times he doesn't even pull up in their databases yeah i mean that's a possibility we can always try that one um the question will be was that was that around back then yeah. and will they still have the records and he actually stopped working as a truck driver around the time that they met. Um, he was delivering newspapers for the Indianapolis Star. Yes. Um, and they didn't have any records on him, did they? Correct. No. So the Witness Protection Program never reuses Social Security numbers. They will issue you a new social security number, but they'll never reuse one. So the fact that he was using a social security number, um, I guess it wasn't. It was new, but child. for himself, they, they would have. I let's, let's say this. I do have some contacts and I have checked that name and they've said no. Yeah. We'll, we'll cover that base. Yeah, we'll go that way. <laughs> The social security number is a complicated thing, and I, I didn't explain it quite right because I didn't even completely understand it. But house phone records probably destroyed, right? Destroyed. Yeah. So there is actually a federal regulation with all these codes and stuff that you have to go by that tells you what type of record it is and what the retention period is for each type of record. 
Um, mm-hmm. When I worked for a government agency, we had to do that. And um, it's either five, seven or 10 years and nothing really. There's a couple things you have to keep forever, but very, very little has to be kept forever. Um, I don't know. I will let you know tomorrow. I'm going to speak to her tonight. Um, did you get any kind of impression about? She would love. She would love to know. Um, I think it's like picking at a scab for her, though. Yeah, I can you know, imagine. She would love to know. I, I know it. I know it bugs her. Um, even if she would say it doesn't, it bugs her, and she would love to know. How could it not, though? I mean, you always have that question mark hanging over your head, and then the the constant why? Why me? Like, why did he do this to me? Right. You're with a man for 10 years. You have a child with the person. You meet this wonderful man. You leave your husband for this man. Six or seven months later, boom, he's gone. Yeah. What a punch to the stomach. And if that's all it was, it would be a punch to the stomach. And that's it. But then to find out 10 years later, hey, that thing that you got over and, you know, you were moving on with your life about let me reopen this wound and tell you that he wasn't who you thought he was and he may be a really bad person and we don't know. And let me hang this big question mark over your head. Right. And thanks for that. Yeah. (laughs) That had to be it. So how hard was that conversation when you first contacted her to tell her all that? She, she really couldn't believe it. Um, And it took me a while to figure out that he was not really, Skippy, um, you know, I, I was so focused on the initial case report, which was, I think, two pages long um, with a lot of federal databases and doing research that way. And then I just I happened across. I think I think what I did is I was able to get the birth certificate and then I was able to track down his sister and spoke with his sister and she said, no, he's, uh, that's my brother. And he passed away and that led me to Cedarville, Ohio. And I was like, wow, because, you know, those records aren't in federal databases. You know, you're looking at, uh, it was either that or find a grave that I found it. And I was like, whoa, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. massive. This, this guy is not who he said he was. And now we have a bigger problem. That had to have been, yeah, I, that would be hard to process. Yeah, she, but she's she's been wonderful through it. She takes it in stride. So from what she said, he, he was very closed about everything. Mm-hmm. Very, didn't have a lot of friends. I think she mentioned there was one couple that they talked to and went to their apartment one time there wasn't social interaction. And remember, they were only together for, you know, right about a year because it was November, November to November, almost exactly a year. So it's, there, there wasn't a lot of people. And she thought he was coming back when he left. She thought he was at an Amway convention. So until she got the letter in the mail, and then once she got the letter in the mail, she's like, wow. Okay, but he's still coming back. So she just waited, and then the phone call started. And and, and that's why I, I don't think you ever actually covered it, but that's why she filed the police report in the end. Yeah. Because she had just written him off, and once GMAC started calling, and she she said, he took the car. I don't have the car. And the uh, the collections agency said, well, then you need to file a police report. And that's why six months after he left, she filed the police report. Otherwise, she would be responsible for the debt as his wife, even though her name wasn't on the car or anything like that. Yes, she was not even going to file a police report. Yeah, because, you know, he's gone. OK, move on with my life. And even with the police report, I mean, it didn't really do her any good because there was, they didn't do anything. Right. They didn't really even look, I don't think, did they? Was there any? So throughout, it's not like they just failed to do anything. 
over the years, you could see where they would like run his information through the national database. Mm -hmm. No one really, they didn't really investigate it. Um, they, but there was no reason to. I right. mean, As an adult, there's no reason to believe that he was in any in any danger. Um, mm -hmm. So we're not we're not going to do that unless we have some reason to. He left. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. He's an adult. He's allowed to do that. Does he have a medical condition? Does he have? Is he threatening suicide? You know, is there something more for us to really go look for this guy? And no, there wasn't. He took the car. Okay, we're we're not going to exhaust a lot of time on it. And yeah. That's, you know, other cases there's a need for it. A simple person that's left like this, yeah, they definitely weren't going to do it back then. Nowadays, yes, we will look. Uh, Times if, have changed a little bit, you right. know, compared to back then. Right. Um, no, we we are not aware of any kids. Um, his wife did have a young child that he had developed a relationship with. They would play throw and catch in the backyard, and he took him to like the Indy Museum and and things like that, and. So that was kind of weird that that he left. I know, right? That was my first thought. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that the little cute little icons don't show up on this. Uh -huh. Damn, StreamYard. Um. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think he stopped because he started at as a janitor uh, at St. Vincent's is why I think he stopped uh, doing the. So he was, my understanding is he was driving the trucks and refilling the candy machines is what he was doing for Chesty. Well, if you think about that, there's a lot of exposure to that. Mm -hmm. Think about someone that wants no exposure. Like when she talked about um, he didn't like to go out to eat, he would take her to fast food drive throughs but he didn't want to go to a sit down restaurant or anything like that. He liked to cook at home. Maybe that's because he liked good food and liked to cook himself, or maybe he didn't want to interact with people. Maybe he didn't want to take the chance of anyone seeing him. Well, I'll agree. I will also disagree. Think about seeing people that do that. Uh, at a place of business or whatever, we all just ignore those people. No, they're filling up the, the snack machine. Like we just don't pay attention to those people. In my experience. Yeah, but if what well, if I, I agree, but I disagree. You know him though. Yeah, if they're delivering that to that store or that place on like a it, it's someone you went to high school with and yeah. you know. Yeah, I totally I agree being recognized. I, I'm just wondering, he seemed like he was incredibly careful with everything. Oh, yeah. 100%. So, I mean, that that could lead someone to think maybe he was from the area, and that's why he didn't like to go out and do things, because there isn't really a lot of evidence that they interacted a lot and went right. and, and did a lot socially. So you had to have a social security number back then you know it, not like the 50s where you could just go work anywhere and you had to have a social so if he's mm -hmm. getting fake using skippy's information he's going to need even if he's in his 30s or 40s he's going to need a social security number to work at these jobs that he's working yeah. like the hospital and stuff and for the the reason that it changed for the license i think was so they could keep a a national database of it as opposed to they were previously issued locally. Mm -hmm. I think I have to look into that a little more. I don't really remember exactly. I think he knew what he was doing. <laughs> I, I, I definitely think he knew what he was doing. Chesty chips. <laughs> Just wanted to go like this every time. It never gets old. I, I can't say it without laughing. Oh, God, I keep bumping my desk and everything's shaking. Maybe he was already married and living a double life. She did say he worked all the time. Yeah. Always at work. Three jobs? Yeah, three three jobs while they were together. Three jobs nonstop. Until it's closed. Yeah. I mean, uh, so I have eight more years before I retire. 
So we're going to solve this thing. Right. Within a month, we're done. Or he had some good guidance. I, mean, it's, I would say, yes, he knew what he was doing. He had probably done this before. Or he just got lucky on his first attempt. Oh, that's the invitation of a lifetime there. Let me tell you. I'm always game. You want to talk about like <sighs> mm. some hardcore artisan bread and mm. food to die for. Food I Fairy has it covered. Love me some food. I know. I'm trying to get her to come like visit Florida because, you know, Florida's awesome. Everybody should come to Florida. We Indiana. have alligators in Florida, man. I mean, Indiana's beautiful today. I think it's 25 and cold. Yeah. So I had to put on a long sleeve shirt today. I was a little upset. Down to 75? <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is wrong? I actually like the cold. Um, explain that one a little more backtracking him. How, like, you mean like prior to when he showed up? Ooh, what part of Ohio? That could be useful. I wish people could talk. I hate no. having to like read text. So as, as far as the backtracking goes, um, he appeared, I think in 1987, basically. And there is nothing with that name before. So Without knowing who he was prior to, I'm I'm dead in the water. We got a friend in Cleveland. So here's here's one thing I like to tell everybody. In law enforcement, I face the fact that you guys, my citizens and my people that want to help are my eyes and ears. My boss is not going to allow me to go to places. I was lucky enough to go to Cedarville in 2018 because I was in London, Kentucky, or London, um, Ohio for a week long fighting class. So in the evenings, and I was right next to Cedarville. So I was able to go and take photos of Skippy's grave and go by the house where he was, where, where Skippy was killed at and take photos of that house and do things like that. But I need people throughout the United States as we get stuff that are willing to look into things for me locally because I, I have cases that I have to work and this is, it's not on the back burner for me, but I can't make it my utmost priority because I have lots of current cases. You have a full-time job right. plus this case. Right. And there's so much going on and everybody's short staffed and everybody's, you know, crunched and everything else in every industry. So it, it's understandable, which is why I'm trying to help out. You know me, I love a good challenge. I appreciate you. And I am so obsessed with this case that is sad. It's like, it has become my mission to solve this. Like she needs an answer. I agree. She shouldn't have to wonder for the rest of her life, like what the hell happened? And I am determined to figure this out. And, you know, I have a lot of resources looking at it from a genealogical aspect. And then I also know a lot about law and all that other stuff. So maybe I can dig into this and one day I find some crazy record. I mean, that's how I, that's how I discovered that he was Skippy. I mean, just boom, one day it was huh, just there or the car just one day. Oh my gosh, there it is. Like, I just, am, I am confident that we will eventually figure it out, but I'm also confident that we will not do it on our own, that it's going to take somebody else helping or giving us a nudge or a hint or a clue or handing us him on a silver platter. Yeah, it, this this is definitely a community effort. It's not, it's not me. It's not you. It's we. And I, I think this case is a fabulous example of what it takes in some instances to solve this. That you know the the um, what's the word? Crowdsourcing. You mm -hmm. know some of these investigations and some of these cold cases actually works. We have no idea, Iris. We know he showed up in 87. We know he left in 92. We have the 
record of the bank account from Hoven, the record of um, the car being found in um, Inglewood, Colorado. And that's it. Done. Right? I will say the, the... Oh, we lost him. Um, sorry, someone was calling me. The <laughs> record that I have access to as far as federal databases, that social security number has not popped up anywhere. And that name, there are a couple other people throughout the United States with that name. Um, I have made contact with each and every one of them. And I am confident that none of them are he. So it's, as far as the, that guy in the picture, <laughs> mystery man we have right. no idea beyond those two records where it went and when and yes figuring out where he came from is the biggest thing do you need to run i no, know you're I'm on fine. time schedule um we don't know yet we're still looking into it we just i just started digging into the cleveland angle um literally just last night i started looking at documentaries um and reading some newspaper articles from back in the day, looking at some pictures, but I know your name. <laughs> uh, TSA, I'm not sure. Does TSA keep records from back then? Good question. Again, my contact with, uh, with those type of people said that that name has not gone anywhere, but I, I think you're going down the facial recognition um, line. So I don't know if that is connected to the national federal facial recognition database. I would think it would be, but I, I can't confirm or deny that. Welcome from Biggin's chat. I appreciate you coming over. Biggin is the best. I appreciate him spreading the word for me. Did you show his picture to Skippy's sister? I did, and she did not recognize him. And she didn't know anyone possibly with that name or anything like that? Just, just Skippy. Just her brother. I'm trying to find this. Hold on. Somebody. Okay. I can. If my bird feeder swinging back and forth is bugging anybody, I'll move. <laughs> That's actually. Is there any legitimate information linking him to Kansas? I, not that I can find. Um, other than... El Dorado. Thank you. Hmm. Did not know that. Um, just, just her saying it, right? Right. That and it. Initially, I thought she was saying that they were married there, but what she was saying is that he had mentioned that maybe she lived there after they weren't together anymore. I think that was the case. South, like the wo Wooter, wo Wooter, I can't even do it. <laughs> I'm too Southern for that. I'm trying to find this and it's not even. Which one are you looking for? So I found this app because someone on uh, Web Sleuth said, can we, can we Photoshop and bald? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I've never done that before. Do you know how long it's going to take me to learn how to Photoshop somebody? So I bet there's an app for that. So I Googled it. There's an app for that to make yourself bald. So I put his picture in there, and it really did make him bald. And I can't <laughs> find – here's the picture. Oh, it's not a very good picture. It's, like, super big. Hold on. It's such crappy quality. It was on my phone, and now I can't find it. I don't want to share the web sleuth screen. Uh, 
I'm working on it, guys. Give me two seconds. All right, present share screen. No, off. Oh my gosh, technology hates me, I swear. All right, there we go. Share, add stream. All right, guys, there you go. <laughs> so that is the, the app Photoshopped him bald and that's what it looks like. I think it literally just puts a oh. circle on someone's head. But I mean, think about it literally, like, I mean, he did have a pretty good uh, receding hairline in those photos as it was. I mean, just, you know, he had the, not the comb over, but it looked like it was receding back up under yeah. anyway. And there is the, the unknown about the hair replacement surgery and whether that has to do with the scar or not. She said the scar down the middle of his head kind of looked like they took his scalp and pulled it together and just sewed it back up, which is really odd. I looked up all kinds of like brain surgeries and there's nothing that goes straight down the middle of your head. It's always one side, the back or something. It doesn't just split it in two. So that was, that was really odd. Um, no, I, I don't know that I actually talked about it. Um, so what made you post on web sleuths? So I was looking for an avenue to, uh, to start sharing the information on and, uh, someone pointed me toward web sleuths and I was put in touch with the founder. And she was interested in the case as well. So uh, that's where it all started. So it was that was really the first uh, public site that I that I put it out on. Yeah. So it, almost all the information that we have discussed is is on web sleuths. I mean, it will take you hours to go through it all because yeah. there are a ton, a ton of pages on there. I mean, there's rabbit holes that people have gone down. There's the stuff I've shared a lot of documents on web sleuths, uh, pictures. So some of the names that we're not mentioning are on web sleuths, um, you know, as rabbit holes. Um, you know, if we've said that we're not chasing after them anymore, I would please don't go chasing after them. But it was a step by step as you were going through the process in Alaska, you were posting and updating everybody. Right. Um, I have summarized everything into a website that I'm going to link in the description. So if somebody wants to read like all the details that we haven't covered, I, I do have it summarized because there are a lot of things we haven't mentioned, but it, it's all pretty much minor stuff. Um, but basically somebody asked for help with genealogy in some aspect of the case and somebody tagged me in a post um, because I do a lot of genealogy. I've been doing it since I was 15 years old and we had to use the microfiche thing to look at the records and whoo. So that's how I got involved. And as soon as I started looking at it, I was like, wow. So we've just been working together with that. All right, just a couple more questions and our fabulous detective has to go. He does. Ever signed up with selective service or voter registration? Hmm. Not that I am aware of. I'm going to say probably not. He did not talk about hardly anything. Very secretive, she said. Very. Yeah, just, just the Greenland thing. Yes, he did mention Greenland. F flying over Greenland or being stationed there. And we've tried to dig into that, but without a name or a social security number, you can't get military records. No, and it, it is a very selective group of people who have been at that base. But again, without having something more pointed, I can't use Paul Raymond Herod. Yeah. That's, we know that's a non-starter. 
But interesting thing about Greenland is back in the early 70s, they were building the missile defense system and they actually were putting advertisements in local newspapers for people to come and work as contractors there. And they had this big advertisement, hey, come work uh, tax free for eight months, six months whatever. So there were civilian contractors coming to that country to work. Yeah. So I, that's another possibility. Maybe it was cosmetic surgery. <laughs> scary, scary, scary. All right, everyone. I want to thank you so much for coming by. And I want to thank our fabulous detective for sharing this case with us and for sharing his time with us because there is no way we would have gotten this much information about it without his insight. And I appreciate you all. And I hope you all will take a moment and share it and tell your friends to share it. Even if they don't want to watch the video, tell them just share it and tell their friends to share it because there's somebody somewhere that knows this dude. Like literally somebody knows it. Yeah. I appreciate all of you. Anything you guys can do to help. I, I, Love you one and all. Somebody's going to solve this case. And when it happens, we're going to be in the news. So, like, let's be famous. <laughs> By someone, multiple steak dinners. Or whatever dinner. I'll buy him a whole cow. That works. To not have this, like, keeping me up at night, I'll buy you a whole right. cow. Whatever yeah. you want. Agreed. Stay safe out there. I know you got a real job to do. Everything's not, you know, cold and been sitting on a shelf for 30 years, but. I do have um, to go to a few minutes, so. All right. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for everything. Everybody, thank you. Take care. And I will talk to you soon. I will provide as many updates as I am able to as time goes on. All right. Thank you. So much. We'll see you.